Okay, the last lecture we talked about the curvature being a nonlinear second derivative of the metric. And uh, since the metric is gravitational potential, we we're showing this time that the curvature corresponds to tidal forces. So uh, this would be the, uh, the first part of chapter six, with how tidal gravity and space time curvature. And then we will go on to talk about the uh, GR field equation, the Einstein equation, and, uh, and very briefly discuss one of the implications of GR field equation is the gravitational wave. Okay, so first we'll give a, a qualitative discussion of tidal gravity. As I said, uh, metric is gravitational potential. The first derivative is gravitational force. So the second derivative of the gravity potential is the relative force, variation of the gravitational force, the relative force. And uh, we see that's, that's exactly what the tides, tidal force is. Let's talk about the case, say, the, the gravitational force due to the moon on Earth. Okay, so we talk lunar gravi gravitational force. Uh, we particularly choose four representative points, uh, two points here uh, in the transverse direction and two in the longitudinal direction. One is close by, one the far side of, of Earth. And because they are not the same, so they are slightly different directions. And uh, these directions can be decomposed. Each of these force can be composed into center of mass force, which is right here. And uh, and uh, and another component. So for, so this standard one is center of mass plus one is point towards the Earth, and here another one also center of mass plus, and the longitudinal one is composed into center of mass one, uh, subtract a force away from the center, okay, and the one close one is uh, a long center of mass plus a force in the uh, away from the center. Okay. So the point is the Earth is in free fall towards the moon, and the moon is of course also free fall towards the Earth. Uh, the center mass gravity is transforming away. Wow, that's the force making the Earth going, uh, going around the moon and the moon going around the Earth. What remains is the relative force in which the center mass is transformed away. Only the black component left, okay, which is uh, uh, longitudinal stretching because uh, the force point away from, from, from the earth and from the center and uh, uh, transfer compression to force point towards the center. Uh, that's why the ocean, the, the, the water on earth will be pulled away in the opposite direction to this, due to this longitudinal uh, uh, stretching, uh, giving rise to t uh, tidal bulges. Okay. This explains why when Earth rotates, there will be two high tides in a day. Okay. This is, of course, a simplified description as there are other effects, notably the solar tidal forces that must also take into account. But at least you get the idea of where tides come from. So now we're going to give a quantitative description of the tidal gravity. In the, first in the Newtonian framework, then see how this can be generalized to, uh, to the relativistic gravity. The so tidal effects is related to relative motion of particles in a non-uniform gravitational field. So what we're going to do is we could consider the two forces, uh, two particles, and uh, see how their uh, how their trajectory evolve uh, due, due to the relative uh, gravity. So two particles trajectory: one is x of t, one other one is x of t plus s of t. So s of t is the separation of the two particles. Okay, this assumed to be small. So uh, so the two particles, so the two equation motions, when for the first particle, I have the acceleration equal to minus the gradient of the gravitational potential. The second uh, equation motion for the second particle 
And it's, again, on the left hand side is the second the acceleration. On the right hand side is minus of the gradient of the gravity potential, but located x plus s. Now s being small, so I can make a Taylor series expansion of the gravity potential at x plus s, just same as gravity potential at x plus a derivative term. Once I substitute a file with the Taylor series expansion on the right hand side of these terms, one is first one again is the minus of the gradient of the potential. So now I can subtract the first equation from the second equation. So these terms cancel, and the first gradient term cancel. Uh, what I left is the right hand side is the second of the separation. And uh, the, uh, on the right hand side, the f first term cancel, so the left always the second derivative of the gravity potential. And this is the so-called Newtonian deviation equation. Okay. So we can look a little more, make sure this this uh, equation to describe the phenomena we qualitatively discussed at the first slide. Now we're going to apply it to a spherical symmetric potential. Well, because the moon's gravity, gravity is spherical symmetric, so phi is equal to minus g mass over r. Now the radial distance is x squared plus y squared plus z squared square root. And so dr dxi is equal to xi over r. You just work out the derivatives. And the gradient of phi is with different respect to this expression is related to xi. You get you work it out. It's uh, 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 it's xi over r cubed. So it's one over r squared. Okay, so this is one r squared force. Then you take one more derivative. Okay, now differentiate the xi by the x uh, delta xj uh, give it delta ij. So just this. Then you differentiate one over r cubed term. You get uh, because the, the power of three comes out and the difference are just like just like the here. here. Okay. So therefore you have this expression with two indices ij. Okay. So you can think this is a matrix. So now we plug this expression of the second derivative into the deviation equation. Okay. And this <coughs> you can can work out. Now let's take x to be in the z direction. So therefore there's no x component, y component, the z component is simply given by the uh, r. And the, then this uh, this matrix, so this is a gm over r cubed, okay, so then this s, so this minus sign came from here, and this s factor to vector. So this matrix is simply is this matrix here. Now, uh, delta ij simply is 1, 1, 1 on the diagonal term. And uh, since x is taken to be longitudinal, so there's no x component, y component. So therefore, this factor will not contribute to the, to the, to the 1, 2 part. Only when xj, xi and xj equal to z component, that's r. So therefore, it's, that's equal to r squared. Just cancel r squared. So it's just minus 3. And so the third, three, three position at one minus three is minus two. So this is the deviation equation for spherical symmetric gravity potential. That's like it's for the case of lunar gravity. And you notice you have a, a attractive force in the transverse direction in the x y component because you have a minus sign. So you have an attractive force in the transverse direction. And in the longitudinal direction. You have plus sign, so therefore it's a stretching and it's a repulsion, and uh, uh, given by this. That's exactly what we we have qualitatively talked about. You have uh, longitudinal stretching and the transverse uh, compression. Longitudinal stretching and transverse compression. Just what? <coughs> well, that explains the ties. You do the same thing for gr. Okay, remember the equation motion is now the geodesic equation. 
and uh, <coughs> so we show how the deviation of geodesic is related to uh, to curvature because the secondary gravity potential is the curvature. So two particles following the geodesic equation, and Taylor expands the difference. Okay, you get the equation of geodesic deviation. So what you find that instead of the second derivative of the gravitational potential, you find they're replaced by second derivative of the, uh, the, of, of the metric. And that's just the uh, 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 rebound curvature. And uh, 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 so that, that's the reason we can interpret the rebound curvature as tidal force tensors. And maybe give a concrete example, like a two two particle original parallel, okay, and they follow geodesic, and they were getting more close together, and in fact that's the you know in Euclidean geometry you have the parallel axiom, you have two uh, two parallel lines they will they will never meet, but in a curved space they will meet, and how these the median separation changes is precisely described by this. Uh, uh, equation deviation of geodesic equation deviation. Uh, we are not really ready to do all the math now. Uh, we have to postpone to your chapter 11 because uh, involved doing this, we need to know how to uh, handle the root properly in a curved space. Okay. And uh, so, so, so they remain to be tensors. And uh, even though this uh, is the last chapter, uh, I think I should point out that uh, uh, you are actually ready to, to, to do this, chapter 11 after chapter 6, uh, because chapter 7, 8, 9, 10 is uh, black hole and cosmology. Uh, there's nothing about extra tensor work. So, you, so, so they are independent. So you can, you can go to, uh, you can just follow the book order study black hole and cosmology, then go to the tensor formalism and GR, or you can, anyways, you can, all three are, topic are separate. They, they do not depend on each other. So, 